<laughs> Welcome to the highly edited Black Bulb podcast. <laughs> Where nothing's authentic and everything is planned. Hey, how are you doing, buddy? And on today's episode, we have uh, Sam, a.k.a. Wolf and Dog, or Wolf X Dog. Yeah. Wolf Dog. Wolf Dog. Wolf Dog. Wolf Dog is a painter, illustrator. I would say, uh, I would say illustrator, yeah. more mixed media. Kind of fuck around with everything and find out, I guess. We saw your stuff at the One Moto Show and... It was sick. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. It was Thanks. right behind um, head stuff, right? It was like a few, uh, I guess, f- f- chain link fence posts down yeah, from Ed. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, I was like probably within like a couple couple of yards from him. It was right people. right by. I remember them being like really similar in like the same area. But yeah, of it, course. It definitely caught our eye. What What was the bike you had? That bike wasn't mine. That's like I didn't even know because when we installed the art, the motorcycles hadn't shown up yet. Oh, okay. So it was like kind of intriguing to be like, what bike is going to be placed in front of my art? Um, and uh, I mean, I had no obviously saying it. I was just like, they let me bring my art, which was super tight. But um, so that's how it worked. Like people, the artists would set up shop, and then they wouldn't decide. They wouldn't get to choose which bike it was. Um, I mean, they never really let us know their creative process and planning. They kind of just said like, you can choose your own space and wall mm-hmm. in the space, mm-hmm. and so. I kind of just tried to choose somewhere that seemed like it was at least easy to access or see and wasn't like too tucked away. And I chose that. And then when I came back to the event, when it was open like a day later, it was like they must have, someone must have like planned the colors of that bike to more or less echo and yeah, kind of be like very similar to my art. And I showed up and I was like, oh, this is actually like the same colors and the design is like kind of similar. It, yeah. they, they curated it. Well. Yeah. I think they curated that part well. Um, but yeah, we had, I had no idea what bike was going to be next to mine or not, mm-hmm. which was kind of cool. It was also more, I think, enticing for me and probably other artists is that like you had no idea what the bikes looked like yet. Yeah. So like, I mean, that's part of the show that I've always been intrigued in because it's like so beautiful to see what people have created with their bikes and what they could go for and what they could do, mm-hmm. how wild, bizarre, or just like, you know, old school it could be. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was interesting to be... Um, Surprise. I bet. Yeah. Everything all right, brother? Yeah. I, I kinda, would. Kind of. My mic's fading in and out, but it's okay. Oh, this guy dropped. Yeah, it happens. I can kind of hear me. I can. Ki- okay. Yeah. I think I'm all right. All right. Cool. Just <laughs> start it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no worries. So I was going to ask you when, because uh, you were commenting on like how they set up the motorcycles and stuff like that. Do you ever get into mixed media stuff or do you, you know, ever try and pick a, like a weird canvas to work on like that? I mean, it seems like some of the people that were doing bikes weren't necessarily bike people. They were just like given an opportunity to make something crazy. Yeah. It seems like half people are builders and then some people are, they, then they team up with like people who do pinstriping or designing. And mm-hmm. I haven't gotten into that Avenue yet with people in bikes just cause I know there's a lot of things that involve like powder coating and yeah. more oh, yeah. intense shit that like I've never done or been shown how to do. Yeah. But I'm super interested because I don't know, my background in art education or going to school for it was like trying to learn how to do everything that you could. Yeah. So then you could teach it more or less. Um, But I'm always down to like figure out and find out new ways to make everything because I kind of feel it's like um, you just like never stop learning. That's how, well, that's how you discover yourself too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you just, you just try things. I mean, yeah. you're not going to know until you try. Exactly. And I'm always like, people are like, you should try pinstriping. And I'm like, I don't know if I have that much of clean handiwork, but yeah. like, I still like, I see those long, crazy, like three inch brushes that people use. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like borrowed times. He does that shit and he, it's so clean. I'm like, really? I'm okay. Like, I'm like, oh. Yeah. We met a guy this, this, yeah, Tater. Yeah. Tater. We met Tater the other day. Um, and he, he does like hand lettering and a sign company. Nice. He doesn't do pinstriping, but I mean, we just learned so much about that whole world because I I'm I've been in this world yeah for a while and and I also to my knowledge had no idea that the paints were completely different. Mm-hmm. He was like saying stuff I'm like I don't even know what the hell that is. They're like <laughs> right, one shot? What the fuck is one shot? Like yeah. someone was telling me about painting my truck. That's exactly what he said. That's funny. Yeah, I was asking. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, Ooh. I was asking dentist, and I was like, "Hey, what'd you use to paint on your bike?" And he was like telling me what he used, and I was like, "I never even heard of that paint." And he's like, "Yeah, that's like moto paint." And I was like, really? "Okay, yeah." So this summer, when I work on my little Datsun truck that I've been trying to fix up, I'm gonna paint all the little weird race stripes and numbers on my truck and get weird with it. So I think this summer will be my first attempt at using like, I guess, moto paint, I guess more of us would say. I want to learn. 
No, I bet. Yeah, oh, dude. yeah. We need to do that immediately. Yeah. Well, did you ever feel like sometimes when you get taught a new technique or step into a new medium that the fact that it's new kind of acts as a source of inspiration because you're both learning the technique as well as experimenting with it? Absolutely. You know what I mean? I feel like that can be a great way to break any kind of like ruts people learn, but also just kind of keep yourself fresh. Yeah, absolutely. It keeps you fresh. Also, like I love challenges. Mm -hmm. Like I love problem solving. Not to the point that I'm like really good at problem solving, but I like creative problem solving. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how can I make this look like this? Or how can I mix these paints and these colors so it works? And then you learn like more, more things and more techniques come kind of more fluent the more you fuck around, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always down to try something because I'm like, who knows? Like this might not be an avenue I want to follow, but this, I can utilize this skill or this material to do like this type of art, painting, et cetera. Like I recently started to use house paint instead of other paint. Mm -hmm. Cause I like scored a bunch of free paint from a paint store that they were going to toss out. And I was like, well, I'll take these Browns, these sky blues, these reds. So I was like, mm -hmm. I'll use them for murals or something. And then I brought it home and was just kind of playing around in the garage. And I was like, this is just like really fluid acrylic paint. And mm -hmm. then I started using more of it and I was like, you just got to layer it once or twice and it kind of works. Then I was like, man, I'm going to give up my secret right now. I was like, man, house paint is like really easy and buttery to paint with. <laughs> and you can find that shit for free. Like everywhere, yeah. like people throw away buckets of paint, and you're like, "Yeah, it's some of that stuff's got it's kind of gross, and you shouldn't touch it because it's old." But yeah. some of it, you're like, "This stuff isn't that old, and I can use it to paint things really fast." Couldn't you add some medium to it too, and kind of change? The... Absolutely, to make it thicker. Yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, the the <laughs> you can absolutely do that, uh, or you can do the broke Sam method, which is just leave the cap off the paint for like mm -hmm. a week, and then it just like slowly <laughs> <laughs> probably yeah. so bad for the planet. Oh man, I'm really <laughs> really bad at that. Um, you got flower stuff too, right? Yeah, yeah, that's another way. But um, you can add flower, but I I found out the the air thickening method by like forgetting that one of my buckets of paint in the garage had the lid off for like a week and I came back and I was like oh this is actually like more like actual thick acrylic paint <laughs> yeah. I like it I had to turn a fan on but I was like okay <laughs> <laughs> I'm inspired by paint fumes um, <laughs> but yeah no I'm always down to try new things because there's the curiosity and then as you asked there's like the um, inspiration of like trying something new and seeing what it's like and um yeah it's kind of like never ending you're like all right well what's this like well i'll try this and if you realize that you don't like it and you're like all right no fuck that and you give those paints to somebody who know will use them yeah you know or you free pile them i usually try to like reach out on instagram and see if anybody wants the paint that i tried that i didn't like like when i dabbled with airbrush and i was like i don't really i'm not into this now and I just like gave someone a free gun in the little wow. the machine. How was, generous like, of you. I was like 10 years ago and I was like in college and I knew some dude that did it. And I was like, do you want another machine? He was like, yeah, sure. I mean, I hadn't cleaned it the last time I used it. So the guy was like, yeah, I'm going to have to like hardcore clean this machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, sorry. He was like, yeah, we sort of into it. But I mean, I kind of feel like if there's something that you're not into or you try and it doesn't work out, there's like somebody who will at least try it after you mm -hmm. or utilize the same materials that you have. And versus like hoarding it in a box in your closet and never using it again. It's like, I'm sure there's somebody out there that will utilize it. Mm -hmm. What would you, let's, let's kind of talk about like your creative process as a whole. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, you brought, you brought this piece, which is, which is gorgeous. You obviously have a ton of traditional skill, which makes sense why you're, um, you say you were kind of learning to be a instructor yeah, to I, teach it. Yeah. I went yeah. to school in Colorado to be a K-12 art teacher. Yeah. And I graduated with, that and a minor in lithography and printmaking. Lithography, oh, wow. yeah. man, that's that's cool. Yeah, yeah. but the world of printmaking is it's just so different, and you it, you can get so much like finer lines and unique lines that you can't get from a yeah. brush or a pencil or anything. Absolutely, and the lithography was when I went to uh, get my art education degree. They're like, you got to choose something to you know more or less be your concentration. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, concentration. And, um, I was like, well, I could do painting, I could do sculpture, you can do, you could shoot ceramics, whatever they had offered, but I've been drawing and painting since I was a little kid mm -hmm. and I had already started to like kind of develop, uh, a style with using acrylic and spray paint and kind of street art. And I kind of was like, well, why spend more money learning something you've already started to naturally figure out? 
why not try something that sounds challenging? So I went with pr- printmaking because it was like labor intensive. Mm-hmm. And also I'd never done it before. Yeah. And so there was definitely like a year or two of like extreme frustration. Oh, I bet. Because I like just drawing and something's done. You yeah. Know, like something fast, quick, you can knock it out. Versus like shit with lithography, you have to like etch the stone, grind the stone. Then you have to like ink up the plates. And then you have to ink up the stone. And then you have to put it through the press. And it's like this whole laborious process. And then your prints have to dry. And I was like trying to more or less teach myself patience through <laughs> lithography. But every kind of artwork requires a certain level of patience. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, maybe like the fastest and maybe this is why most people do it. But like taking photos of, on a phone. That's the easiest and quickest form of artwork for yeah, people. Absolutely. And I think that's why so many people are obsessed over it because they think they're being artistic. Well, I mean, you can be artistic with a camera phone, mm. um, but it's like, it's the most one and done kind of thing you could do. Absolutely. Well, yeah. they talk about like the barrier to being like to enjoyment, right? So when you're a kid and you've never done anything, you take a crayon and you draw a circle, like you are pleased with that because you have no frame of reference. True. You know what yeah, I mean? So yeah. like it's 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 very satisfying when you're little to do stuff because you're constantly impressed by your improvement. Yeah, if you're like, if picking something up as an adult, having seen the amount of visual art that we've all seen, even if we're not like super into it, it's really discouraging to be like, Well, this is the shit that I made versus if you go on your phone, you have the pre made filter and this, that and that. I mean, it's it's a like you said, it's the barrier to like getting something satisfying. Mm-hmm. So ultimately probably not as rewarding because the labor is kind of what makes you feel like you did something to earn it. Yeah. But you know, I think that's, that's probably kind of a lost thing right now. Cause yeah. that, that instant gratification is pretty, is pretty like seductive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's instant, but there's also the funny thing is the people who dabble in the filter art of Instagram, <laughs> um, <laughs> they get instant gratification, but they're like, that's what I look like, you know, versus mm-hmm. like people who paint and draw. You're like, I really wanted to draw an Oak tree. That shit looks like a pine tree. You're like, ah, I got to figure out how to make it look like an oak tree, not a pine tree. Mm-hmm. First, so like there's, you know, there's equal gratification to some extent if you can get it to look like what you wanted to. But maybe people who do filter <laughs> photo art on their phones <laughs> are probably happier with their creative process because there's less questioning because it's like, <laughs> this is a fucking tree. This kind of looks like a tree with a drawing. So it's like, you know, maybe there's like some some fun thing that I haven't figured out yet with filters on Instagram, but I, I really like your art. Let's not, div- I feel like I'm going to be terrible. He's going to give up on this badass art he's making. Oh, to absolutely. Be, to be absolutely not. Absolutely not. And they're going to be like, Joe, we blame you. God damn it. <laughs> um, so yeah, where, where do you start with the piece? <laughs> yeah. So with my whole process, yeah, I guess yeah. after Instagram, after, um, Instagram. <laughs> after looking at all those beautiful photos, filtered photos of people and things. Um, <laughs> I think a huge part of my process for a long time, it was like a lot of, I want to figure out how to draw that, Mm -hmm. you know, being like, um, I want to figure out how to draw people. So it looks like them enough that people can recognize them. And then I started being like, well, that got kind of boring. And I was like, (laughs) I just wanted to challenge myself with like drawing random things, you know, like just drawing practices. Like, even though I think still lifes are so stupid and so boring they still teach you technique very quickly, um, more or less. But for me, it started to becoming like, what am I inspired by? And it could be on a very broad spectrum. Like, well, I'm inspired by obviously wolves and dogs and canines. So it's like, you know, there's only so many times you can draw a black wolf before you get kind of bored of it. Mm. And then I'm like, well, that's cool. You're kind of mastering a wolf. Well, have you drawn a coyote in the last like two years? And I'd be like, oh, no, I haven't, no, I haven't drawn a coyote. I just draw drawn a coyote. So there's like a lot of questioning about like yeah. what have I done and what I want to learn how to draw. So that's a huge part of my process is like trying to figure out what I haven't drawn yet or painted yet. And then I have, once I feel more comfortable with a certain animal shape or I guess thing, um, then I'm like, well, how can I play with it? How can I make it fun? How can I make it more weird and abstract and taken apart and re-put back together in my own style? And that's where like the fun and the magic for me happens because it's like I've learned if I figure out a few different things with proportion and the eyes of the animal, then everything else is kind of just like this fun abstract zone just to like figure out and fill in. Yeah. Which is really fun, and that's a huge part of my process is like trying to figure out how I can create something that's proportionally correct, but then still gives me the freedom and the space, open space, to like play with technique, texture, 
color, light, shading, and um, that's really fun for me. And that's a huge part of my process. And then now I'm trying to integrate with that on a very more like fast, I guess, like instant um, situation is like seeing a bird and then being like, all right, that's cool. That's a cool looking bird. I'm like, I should try and draw that bird if I can. And then I'll try in different ways of drawing it and I'll find, try and figure out what's on the internet and figure out what bird it was. And then that's fun. And then you end up with this. And then I end up with that. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. And then that's like, and the funny thing is like, I'll start off with a drawing of one bird and then like, for example, like that's a peregrine falcon or like my version of a peregrine falcon. Yeah. And sometimes I'll draw like a red tail hawk in black and white. And someone's like, that actually looks like a seal, bro. And I'm like, it does. And they're like, why did you turn it into a seagull? I'm like, it was just through the process of drawing and filling in space, like the head shape changed. And like, now I guess it's a seagull. <laughs> and people were like, I don't know. I've had a few friends, like someone I used to know in California was a like, um, a falconer. They were like an actual professional falconer. And they're oh, like, wow. I heard those guys are almost always missing an eye. Was he missing an eye? No, she was not missing okay. an eye. <laughs> or at least yet. We were in our 20s. So <laughs> I don't know if, if she, if Vanessa is missing an eye or not now. You might be. I don't know. Um, <laughs> hopefully not. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully you're all good. Hopefully not. Hopefully um, was, yeah. But uh, like I remember like one day she was like, that's the incorrect beak for that bird. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, their beaks aren't actually shaped like that. But she wasn't being mean. She was being friendly. Yeah. And she was being nice. And I was yeah. like, oh yeah, no, I was just kind of just like fucking around and just filled in the area right there with like shading. And now it just has a bigger or smaller nose. Mm. Wow. But then that's more or less also the fun of creating is like why limit yourself to something that needs to be like a dictionary exact term of what it is because I feel like if you pigeon your hole and making sure that everything is perfectly exact how it's supposed to be then you kind of lose the fun of your own creative process now you're, back to that, now you're back to that still life thing that you said you don't really find all that entertaining yeah yeah <laughs> well that's the other thing that kind of speaks to like the the labor to get to a place right mm -hmm. if you told me Joe draw a falcon and then you were positive it was a bird and, and someone was like <laughs> hey man this looks more like a seagull than a falcon I'd be like well it sounds like a fucking win to me buddy <laughs> because my level is as such right a specific so, bird yeah. exactly <laughs> like you know like that that's and again I mean that's a really good way to talk to people like talk young artists right it, it's very daunting to be like, draw me a peregrine falcon. You're like, yeah. I can do a bird. Okay. <laughs> so like, can, just, I, can I draw this? Yeah. Is, yeah. Does this work? Is yeah. that cool? All right. We have, great. We have the lights right. up today. Yeah. Flappy wings. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of speaks to like, maybe it's worth it to kind of invest in that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have a question though about when you like, when, when did you say you started making work that started um, gaining attention to the point where you were like, this is, this is my style and this is what I'm going to continue doing. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think trying to think, um, I feel like, cause in college I did a lot of like, I'm going to try this and I'm gonna try that. There was absolutely like a, probably like a 10, yeah, a 10 year period of my life where I was like, I'm going to try things like this and see if people respond to it. And then you'd be like, no one, no one cares about that. <laughs> and then you're like, well, I'm gonna try drawing this. And you're like, okay, well people obviously, like my brother and my sister, because I grew up in the South Side of Chicago in the 90s, they were super into like hip hop culture, house music and graffiti and street art. More so graffiti, because street art didn't really exist then to the context that it does now. But like I used to like cheat off my brother's black book and I would like draw his bubble letters or his wild style. And so then since, since like being like 12, I've been always playing with graffiti letters and shapes from in sketchbooks to like on walls. So that's always been a part of my sketchbook somewhere. There's always been at least some letter work or like characters from graffiti. So then I tried to like push that into my drawing more in college and bring it back because it was more of like that was just free form fun for me in my pastime. Then I was actually something I brought into class. Because, like, traditional teachers now are more open to it. But traditional mm. teachers, like, 15 years ago, mm. they didn't give a fuck about someone doing bubble letters on a painting. You know? They were, yeah. like, they were like, why are you doing this? It's not fine art. And they're like, fuck you. It's fine art. Um, it's, it's like typography. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. And if someone can do typography with a spray paint can the dark and do English-style <laughs> letters perfectly, it's like, this is absolutely fine art. Fucking Karen. <laughs> Uh, we found the title of the episode. <laughs> this is fine fucking art, Karen. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
or Randall. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't always have to be a lady. It could also be a dude. Um, um, yeah, so that would be a Skyler, I believe. Is the Skyler, there you go. There. All right, fair enough. Oh. Um, but uh, <laughs> I think... <laughs> Alex is over here like, Joe, you just alienated all the Skylers. <laughs> I think a huge part of me figuring it out was like realizing that if I kind of integrated the juxtaposition of my love for animals with like the rawness of graffiti and street art, that's kind of where like it started to click for me and it also started to click for other people. And I would use a lot of color for a long time and I didn't really get into like finite lines. And then like I kind of just, I think I kind of was broke for a while. So I could afford was like pens and paper. I couldn't afford buying acrylic paint. I couldn't afford canvas. So I was just like drawing more. And I also realized the better you get at drawing, the better you get kind of at everything, Mm -hmm. 2D at least. It's like if you can flesh something out really fast with a pencil, it's going to be easier for you to figure out how to do shade, light, and forms with paint kind of, I feel like, of any kind. Yeah, I actually found that the more I drew, the better I was at like Photoshop. Yeah, I bet. And like photo editing. Because you understand like how like the relationship of shadows in the space, how they work. And then when you like, Photoshop something in your biggest thing is to make sure that it looks <laughs> it looks like it makes sense in there yes. and that's all about like adding shading adding brightness darkness like all that shit and it just makes more sense yeah so I, I totally agree with you the, the more you draw the better you get yeah it's there. that's drawing is the key to like so many different doors in the art yeah. world because it's like if you can flesh it out or try and figure it out by drawing it then it's going to be a lot easier for you to then follow the next steps of completing or starting a painting or even probably even starting a sculpture i've barely done like 3d but i'm sculpture. always interested <laughs> sculpture is cool i mean it's wild it's it's tough though it's tough it's i'm so bad at that <laughs> yeah it's very um i mean i barely know but i feel like it's very unforgiving because it's like if you carve too hard and you carve through a sculpture you've been working on for like three months and you just jab a hole through it and you ruin the form like yeah you can't just take yellow and patch that hole real quick right. yeah, yeah you know no, you gotta like redo the whole fucking sculpture yeah. like oh man wood. And there's dudes out there with chainsaws and yeah. trees just like sculpting with that it's like that's intense unlike the falconeer they're not missing eyes those dudes are missing fingers <laughs> oh yeah um, limbs man limbs or their leg i don't know um but i think yeah, I mean, I think I kind of lost myself there, but that happens. Um, but <laughs> yeah. I feel like, oh, so I, to go back, I feel like what I realized was more successful was that I could utilize just black and white drawings to integrate like the textures and also the styles of street art and graffiti, graffiti more so into animals. Hmm. And once I started to figure that out, I would say like eight years ago maybe seven years ago, I figured it out. And um, I was like, cool. So those open spaces I talked about, like once you figure out form and proportion on animals and forms and spaces, there's like the things in between that you can fill in with textures or color. I started realizing that you'd like integrate fonts and letter works, or you could integrate like the deconstruction of symbols into Whoa. animals. What? So then it became this like fun, like process. So I started telling myself that it's kind of like, hand drawing a collage into the form Mm -hmm. and sometimes i'll like actually put symbols and words into animals sometimes i don't sometimes it's just me just playing with texture and lines makes sense but then sometimes i'll be like cool i'm gonna integrate like the 76 logo into a running (laughs) mustang because (laughs) like because mustangs the car need gasoline so then yeah 76 makes sense because traditional old school letters is still Uh. the sign so you integrate that with the animal and then it creates this like more cohesive thing that is like works on both sides of people who love animals and people who just like love like the wild energy of a horse and they compare it to their truck that's what makes art cool man all those weird kind of like uh parallels to it that just bring it together and you don't know until you hear the artists say it and acknowledge it and you're like oh i get it now yeah and there's (laughs) and it's 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 kind of fun once i figured that out i was like oh this is kind of like hand draw a collage of an animal and i was like what else do you put in there and then there's like a wolf drawing I have at my house where like I was like the reason was well, reason why it's wolf and dog or wolf x dog. This was real quick tangent is because uh, I had a dog for like 17 years and she went everywhere with me. Mm-hmm. We did like everything together. And so then I started this drawing of like knowing that her life was coming to an end. So I like tried to in- integrate like our story into a drawing. Mm-hmm. Wow. So then like I drew different parts of like 
Oregon or California, just like in the texture of the wolf's hair. And then I would take like different triangles and I'd map it out and then I'd like put different things in there. And like one section, for example, is a topographic map that I hand drew. Wow. But the numbers aren't um, actually elevations. They're years of me and my dog living in different states. And you can like go up the years in elevation oh, in the map really cool. that I drew inside of the wolf. Dude, that's such a good idea. I and it's that. like a two two inch by two inch section. But yeah. like unless if I didn't tell you that, you just be like, oh, it's a topographical map. But you like look at it closely, you're like, that says uh, 2003, that yeah. says 2007, that says 2011. And I was like me doing like a topographical map of years of like our friendship. Wow. wow. And, I love that. and then that became, when I did that wolf, that became like a huge process of like integrating a personal story mm-hmm. into pieces. So it has like more of actual, like, I mean, a story to tell. Yeah. Um, but then also it's kind of fun because like sometimes I'll just like, it doesn't have to be about me. It could be like, for example, like last year was the 25th anniversary of wolves being reintegrated into Yellowstone. Mm-hmm. So I drew a picture of like some wolves and I integrated, integrated like 25 and I integrated like Yellowstone and I integrated like all these different things that involved the story of the wolf coming back to that park. And so it was like made by me, but it was their story. Yeah. Which was fun. And then I named that piece Yellow Snow. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this is getting too heavy. Yeah, I need that. Yeah, it's getting too heavy. I'm just going to call this wolf piss drawing. All right. <laughs> there we go. Move on. Oh, well, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. One of the things that's kind of a cool, I don't know if it's intentional or not, but with the mixture of patterns that you use, especially in the one that you just brought in there, like those are all really organic patterns. Mm-hmm. But from as you look at the entire thing, it almost reads a little mechanical because it's so many you know what I mean? Like normally things that have that varied of textures that close to one another are like something that we put together. Yes, you know absolutely. I mean? But so like, there's a part of that that almost feels like, like, um, I forget what movie it was like a bug's life when they make the bird out of like mm-hmm. all the little pieces and stuff uh, like that. Yeah. And so, but it's like, it, there's something both mechanical and organic about it. And it's very cool. Like, I don't know if you went into it with that plan, but if, or if it's the Bob Ross happy accident, but like it is a really unique, you know, kind of gestalt of the whole thing. It's pretty dope. Um, I would say originally it was absolutely a happy accident. Mm-hmm. And then I started to like, I rec- I, re- I recognized it a few years ago. I was like, that looks like a gear. And I was like, oh shit. Was I subconsciously integrating mechanical parts into these animals? And mm-hmm. then I realized that I was like, I think I am. No, I definitely am. You know, I was like, I first questioned myself and I was like, no, you absolutely drew like that is a bicycle gear. Like yeah. that is a bicycle <laughs> gear and a wing. You absolutely drew that. <laughs> uh-huh. um, and then I started being like, well, that's cool. Well, this is fun. And then I started like watching more animation that had like anatomical animals or like mechanical animals yeah. in it. And I was like, this is cool. And I feel like it helps depict or tell like how you'd think a wing would move if you were to build it. Yeah. So then there's like the fun curiosity of being like, how would you make it so it looks like it had the sprocket that the wing would move out and come back in? Mm. And then that's like a fun part of being like, I don't know what word to write in there. All right, cool. I'm going to draw some nuts and bolts. And sometimes I'll actually will just draw actual nuts and bolts. And sometimes I just draw shapes that are similar to it. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like, that kind of looks like that. Usually I also try and sneak skateboard wheels into things because <laughs> I've been skateboarding since I was like 10. So it's like, uh, by no means am I good and I'm not going to do a tray flip for you, but um, <laughs> we can ride a bowl. That would be tight. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'll, like you'll see, like sometimes you'll see things that look like bearings or like a part of a skate wheel or a skate truck. And it's just me just like putting in things that I enjoy in my life hidden inside of my animals. Very cool. But sometimes it's funny because people, people will get used to seeing things tucked away in animals that they'll like, I got to find what he hid in this, in this animal. And I'm like, Oh dude, there's not, there's nothing in there. I'm sorry. (laughs) Sorry. You spent 20 minutes trying to find something in there. It's just lines. Sorry. I I totally see now why you were sandwich and a soda. And I'm going to stay here. (laughs) I see the fucking sailboat. I see the fucking sailboat. Uh, I see why you were considering art education because you definitely um, you show like the potential that work can be yes. with your work. And mm-hmm. You do a really good job explaining that because like I now that I know that I look at this in like a completely different way. Um, and I think that's a good takeaway for a lot of artists. A lot of artists should try to be more meaningful with their work and their messaging. And I think that's you're doing a great job with that, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I think it's really important to integrate your 
you know, your own story or your reflection of what's going on around you, mm -hmm. as long as you're not trying to perpetuate racism, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, then yeah. it's good. Go for it. You know, tell your story as long as you're not doing anything that's going to harm people. I love um, that we live in a world where that caveat is necessary. <laughs> unless you're going to harm Nazis, because you absolutely should. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> now everyone's seen my face. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Or maybe I should have. I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Um, yeah, yeah, it's really lame that some people would use artwork to uh, fuel racism. You're doing it wrong, right? Yeah. When that's your goal. Super wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Super wrong. <laughs> absolutely not. But let's not go into that rabbit hole. But... Um, <laughs> But no, I think it's I think it's important for people to understand that you should, you know, integrate your your own reflection or things that inspire you into your art cuz then there's more fun there's more like personal storytelling. And then that's also like a fun challenge to yourself which is like how can I make this meaningful for myself as well as the viewer? And then the viewer is going to read your painting and art however they want to. You know, that's the whole thing it's like you could tell a story you could write a word but that word is something totally different to somebody else mm -hmm. you know um like you could write the word height and someone would be like i am tall and then someone else would read that word and be like i am scared of heights so it's like mm -hmm. so things so simple can, simple can also be so complicated on different you know views for different people but um i don't know it's it's very hard to try and tell people that like you have to integrate a story because also it's just like sometimes it's just raw expression where you don't know what you're doing mm -hmm. is like very cathartic. And that's what I also learned with like some line work is like line work can be very cathartic because you're just like filling in space with light and dark and you're not really per se planning or thinking. You're kind of just like the act of art is cathartic generally. So it's like that's also fun. And I try and I try to break away from the things that I normally do to do something that can be like completely cathartic and I don't know what the hell it is mm -hmm. like painting backgrounds is usually cathartic for me because there's no real plan it's just like I'm going to use gray and pink and see what happens yeah, I mean, then, yeah then you fill it in and you're like that's cool and then I started doing these things recently these like dirty rainbows <laughs> where I just like was using random house paint that I found and then old cans of spray paint and I was just doing these like big drippy sloppy rainbows on backgrounds and it was just like I was having a hard time. We were all stuck at home for the last year. I wasn't able to see my friends. I wasn't able to do art walks. I wasn't able to like experience other people because I'm obviously an extrovert. So it's like I just started doing those because it was like funny. Mm -hmm. It was like fun. And then I was also like, this is kind of it's not stupid, but I was like, this is so easy. I don't have to think about it. Yeah. What's, and, a, what's an art walk? An art walk? Yeah. An art walk is like, for example, like, Usually in the pre-COVID times, um, I wouldn't say normal. I wouldn't say pre-COVID. Um, like art walks, for example, in Portland, um, usually the first Thursday art walk, it would be like 6 to 9 p.m. All of the galleries in Northwest Portland would open their doors and they would serve like snacks and complimentary beverages, non-alcoholic and alcoholic. And the whole point of the art walk was like for people just to be out and about in the city and like experiencing art. Wait, is this like the first Thursday stuff or is it like different? Yeah, yeah. first Thursday. Oh, it's just for, okay, okay. This yeah. is first Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like I, that's like for a long time in different states I've lived in, I've always just loved art walks because it's like there's no like you don't have to make a donation if you're broke to see art. You don't have to pay to be in a gallery to see art or a museum. You just get to like show up and see it. And then you get to like talk to random strangers about art that you're looking at on the wall together which is kind of fun because you have like a snap two minute conversation with a stranger you're probably never going to see again. Yeah. You're like, what do you think about this pain? Like, it sucks. And you're like, you suck. And you're like, all right, cool. And you walk away. <laughs> or you have a really detailed, cool conversation about the color blue, you know, yeah, like yeah. whatever. But it's like, I just, that's for a long time. I feel that art walks were like my favorite day to have off and my favorite day to like go do art and experience people and culture. Cause it was like, yeah. you get to see so many different images so quickly. You're like trying to download the content with your own brain and then you go home and you're like, whoa, what do I, what do I pay now? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Very, it's, I it ate is, a lot of wine and cheese and crackers. I should probably go to sleep, but I, well, I want to make something now, you know, like, I don't know. It's always inspirational. Mm -hmm. It did bug me though. And when you started seeing like the party scene merge into it. Yes. That was annoying. Yeah. I feel like it's, it was, it's kind of fun if there's like. If there's obviously free alcohol, alcohol is the catalyst of getting people to buy art a lot mm -hmm. of the time. So, which is sad to say, um, <laughs> but also is necessary. 
I mean, it's everyone knows it most for the most part, but um, it's like it would. So many of the art walks I've been to are so fun, but then suddenly it's like the art walk ends, and you see like people are more or less like alcohol zombies at the end of the night, leaving these galleries, versus like people leaving with art in their hands or like a new T-shirt. You know, mm. they're kind of just like faded. Yeah, but it's also cool because the people who are there actually for the art are going to remember it and they're going to come back, you know, they're gonna, or they're going to take someone's Instagram handle or their business card or mm-hmm. their stickers and they're going to go home and they're going to follow that person. And then that could lead to either a connection, a friendship or someone supporting an artist down the road. It's funny that you talk about the relationship to art and alcohol. Cause like if you talk to a stand up comic, they'll always tell you the most difficult show of the week is Friday night late show. Oh, I'm sure. Because like Friday early, like people got off work and people drink different when they've been worked the same day. Saturday, you've already been off. You maybe slept in a little, had a coffee. Like, you don't drink like your life depends on it. Mm. So, like, by the time the first show ends, like, they're starting to get a little bit rowdy. And the people that showed up for the next show have been sitting in the bar waiting for 45 minutes because it always goes late. And they've been like, well, this doesn't count against your two-drink minimum. And then, you know, I, I do a lot of rowdy comedy clubs, so maybe this isn't like that at all of them. But then you get to Friday Night Late and people are just slaughtered and you're like oh there's a there's a difference like i'm managing you now as opposed to expressing some kind of art to you mm-hmm. you know and i i don't know how often people talk about their dicks to an art gallery so maybe it's a little different with stand-up comedy <laughs> <laughs> that's like you never know yeah you, you, never, know. you, you never know <laughs> yeah but no for real, like that that is kind of the the actual pragmatism of like how are we gonna like make this thing a business like alcohol does come into it yeah yeah absolutely the, the one thing that i've always been scared of is like not scared, but you're like at a, you're at a, a, an art walk or like first Thursday, and you realize that like you're like okay, now we're, we're past the point of no return for the most of this crowd, this crowd, <laughs> and you're like just don't just don't lean into my painting, just don't don't oh, touch the art, just don't, don't spill touch something. the painting. People are like that's cool, I'm gonna touch that red. You're like don't touch the painting. Yeah, people are like why not? It's in a gallery. They we love can touch it, it right? You're they like, can't yeah. resist yeah. the urge. Like, I just got. I just want to feel no, it. No, no. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> oh, but there's also the same people who pet people's dogs without asking, and then they get bitten. You know, I mean, there's, you know, I mean, but I feel like you would kindly let someone know not to pet your painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I pet your painting? No, no. It's a service painting. Don't touch it's, them. It's a service <laughs> painting. <laughs> that, should, that should totally be the sign, though. Don't please don't pet the paintings. Yeah. I like please that. Please don't pet the paintings. <laughs> That's also a great name for a group show. Please don't pet the paintings. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the relationship of alcohol and uh and the art shows. It reminds me so much of like how you know, like on bus- the conventional business trips they go like golfing. Mm-hmm. They get like wasted. They get wasted. Why do you it's... always undermine my portion of the business, Alex? No, I <laughs> you you don't go on golf no, trips with any of our clients, but like but that's such a normal thing. <laughs> yeah. They go on like this four hour like golf bender. Yeah, uh-huh. you know, and they get totally hammered and then they become best friends by the end of it and then they sign a piece of paper. They sign a piece of paper and they're like, I actually don't remember any of that conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you were pretty convincing in getting me to shotgun a Coors Light on the ninth <laughs> hole, so I will absolutely <laughs> sign this piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> Those cookies you had are really making me feel warm and fuzzy now. Yeah. I just want to hang out in the golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get Callaway to sponsor this now. Just oh to, my just god! To, just make that Alex one. Mad. <laughs> Black Bull Podcast brought to you by Callaway Golf. So not the market. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that would yeah. that would suck so bad. Yeah. No. So uh, let's talk about let's talk about social media just because it's a hot topic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what, what would you say is your favorite thing about social media? What is your least favorite thing about social media? Um, I would say my favorite thing about social media is the quick access to information. Mm -hmm. Um, which, you know, as we all learned is not necessarily always correct information, but I think my favorite part of social media is the, how quickly you can be informed if that's from news to local to even like, you know, creative things like open art calls you know like like oh, i don't even know this is happening these people are doing an open art call for a mural like that's really cool or like just yeah i would say the the quickness to information and the access to art itself because you can like go down a rabbit hole of looking at someone's art that you didn't know and then suddenly you're like looking at the art scene in like saint petersburg russia and you're like whoa i didn't even know this like style of painting existed and it's because you went down a hashtag rabbit hole on Instagram because mm-hmm. of one painter style. Yeah. I think that's probably my favorite part of social media is that you can find and see things so easily. And for people that are either like, it's not possible to travel 
or not possible to even get outside the city to see something um, to find inspiration from, you can find inspiration from the things in your phone. Yeah. You're like, whoa, I didn't know. I never heard of a red panda before. Like mm. these things are dope. You know, <laughs> and then you're like, you're like, I want to draw a red panda. Yeah. Um, I want to pet a red panda. Can I pet the red panda? <laughs> <Can I? laughs> the service panda. <laughs> I would absolutely be down to be bitten by a red panda just so I could pet it. But I mean, that's, that's just me. But, yeah, yeah. um, can you get a service panda? <laughs> <laughs> I don't prob- probably like, not. We should start a business that gives you them quickly. We'll call it Panda Express. Panda oh. Express. Oh god. Oh, oh god. I couldn't, um, I couldn't resist that. I was <laughs> that was that was pretty easy. That was that was lined, that was lined up. Um, but I would say that's probably my favorite thing is the your access to information and the access to inspiration. Yeah. Because you can I mean like from some people find inspiration for their art through reading, and it's like True. obviously through social media. There's so many ways for you to like find out about new poems, new authors, new writings. Um, so it's kind of like a black hole, black hole of, um, possible inspiration Mm because you might not find inspiration, but you could. And I would say the thing that's probably the downfall of social media that a lot of people would agree is, um, the materialism and fakeness that it can portray. And also that it's still for some reason, a avenue for people to express hate. Yeah, yeah, and, and I would say super that unfortunate. I would say yeah. that the the three number one things that I hate about social media is like materialism, and then the comparison anxiety you get from it. Yeah, and then that it can be utilized as an avenue of hate. Well, that's kind of what they talked a lot about in that uh, what was it the social social dilemma social dilemma? Yeah, that documentary and how it just if you have hate, then it kind of knows you have hate and it gives you all the hatred shit, and mm-hmm. then you just you feel more like justified for your hate, and then you find people in that community hate. It's it's just like a it snowballs into a really shitty place, and that's that's honestly the uh, the to blame. First of all, some shitty people existing, but also like the algorithm said, yeah, it's like fuel in the fire for that. Yeah, it absolutely is. It's super like it, it sucks. It yeah, sucks it's to a, see it happen. It's a dangerous duality that social media is because it's like you can find so much light and like positiveness through yeah. what people are expressing, learning, understanding, and then there's the other side where it's people who are trying to suppress that. Yeah. Well, and also kind of like, because their ultimate goal is engagement. They don't care what it is. They just want you on that thing, Mm -hmm. right? And so like we were kind of laughingly talking about the statement you made earlier, but you obviously meant it in sincerity of like, yeah, express yourself with art as long as you're not expressing hate. It's like art creates engagement, whether it's not on social media, but it's in person or it's whatever it is. If a good art is engaging. Mm -hmm. And so like if you're engaging that part of someone's brain and like citing a flag up to let other people that want to engage negatively, that's dangerous shit. And it is important to like, acknowledge the power of the fact that like positivity and art that like has a good message. It can do the same thing, but in a good way. Yeah. And then people will challenge, not people, but some people might challenge it. Like, well, you know, like hate and anger should be expressed. It absolutely should. Like apps. I'm not saying that people shouldn't express hate. I'm saying people shouldn't express like, you know, hate, like intense hate upon other people, but like expressing the dark side of yourself is, can be just as positive as just expressing the light side of yourself. Yeah. Catharsis is real. Yeah. A hundred percent. So yeah. it's like you, there's a weird line where you try and explain the difference between two different kinds of hate and one needs to be expressed and one doesn't. And people are like, well, it's the same thing. And you're like, mm, not really. Mm-hmm. If you're like hating another group of people and you're trying to express it through art, then I, I'm not absolutely into that at all. I'm not. But if you're expressing the fact that you like may battle with self hate and that art is the vehicle for you to express that, which then makes you happier, go for it. Like mm-hmm. that's, just as important as expressing that you like are happy you yeah. know um but all of that it can be gray and muddy and you never really you never really know if what some person's really trying to express until you hear it from their mouth and everything i said was probably just confusing right now and i'm sorry but. <laughs> <laughs> i think that's part of the appeal of it though i mean yeah. if, if art was so on the nose i mean people would stick with picture books yeah you know what i mean like, like there's intent nuance how did you do it you mm-hmm. know what i mean it's easy for us to come in here and be like, okay, let's talk about like the actual process. You know, what paint do you use? This is like the example which we started with, but then you get into why people do it, and mm-hmm. that's I think that's where the really interesting part of art comes from. Like, yeah, as someone that was very, very like lightly involved in art before I started doing the show with you, you know, cut to two years later, and I'm fascinated by this shit. <laughs> and like, I think that's fun for people to hear. Yeah, yeah. Do you do mostly Instagram? Yeah, um, I had Facebook, and I started to put my art on it, and then I. 
uh, I a few years ago I just had to get off because I was just like too tangled in in comparison anxiety with other people. Bullshit! Being, it's yeah, just so much bullshit. bullshit on there. I was just like tired of being like I don't really care what this person from seventh grade feels about like yeah. the <laughs> fact that I like live in a van with my dog and work on a pot farm. Like I don't care that you don't think this is a righteous lifestyle. I'm like whatever. I get to go to the river tomorrow and swim with my dog. You don't. Um, <laughs> but also like, you know, I mean, it's just, I had to leave Facebook cause of the anxiety that I was uh, getting from it. That yeah. it wasn't positive. It wasn't as fun as it used to be. And it's so much negative energy on it. Yeah. There's a lot of negative circles and loops that get stuck in on Instagram, not Instagram and Facebook, but I had to kind of more or less choose. I was like, well, if you want to s- slow down your social media use so you can experience life to more full extent, you got to eliminate one of these two. So I was like, well, Instagram is more fun because it's like instant gratification. You're like, ah, oh, Tommy's eating tacos in San Diego. That's tight. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, is oh, a- oh, SK is drawing an, another dude with a helmet on and it's super dope. You're like, <laughs> yeah. awesome. He's, he's drawing. That's great. You know, like, um, or you're like watching people do pottery and you're like, that's nice. Um, I just think that Instagram is more fun because you don't have to read what someone's caption is on Instagram to just see it. You're like, yeah. cool. Ah, that's what that per- that person's doing. Ah, that's what that person's doing. Versus like Facebook will be like start off with a giant statement and then you're like reading someone's <laughs> statement. political <laughs> beliefs from fourth grade and you're like, I don't I haven't even hung out with you in seventeen years. Like that's I don't exactly know. it. So <laughs> that's why I mean a, a few years ago so I was like, I'm just gonna go with Instagram because people are gonna see my art and they're either gonna appreciate it or they're not, and that's fine. That's their decision. You are, know. Are there any platforms creeping up right now that you uh, keep your eye on? No, uh, not that I know of. I probably should be more engaged in other avenues for people to see my art, but I'm kind of just stuck on Instagram. I'm also like, um, like I have zero graphic design skills. Like you can ask any of the other people, or probably half the people who've been on your podcast that are my art friends. You'd probably be like, yeah, Sam's absolutely sent me a file to like turn into a tiff <laughs> and he doesn't know that he could just do that with his <laughs> computer <laughs> i'm like i don't know i don't know how to, i don't know how to do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're like the button is right there i'm like i don't know what button you're talking about and like oh man <laughs> i do that to him still so. yeah this is, makes sense yeah. but um yeah i don't know like what what are you talking about like what are the other avenues i'm curious i mean like like tiktok tiktok exists yeah i thought about doing tiktok i'm still on the i just need to do it because people mm-hmm. love process videos yeah I, honestly, getting to know you slightly, you might consider Twitch as being an avenue for you because I feel like if you really do kind of, I don't know if you've talked to yourself the way you just talked to us about how you're like where your brain's going with what textures are doing. Yeah. But you're funny and you're engaging. Like I, I would watch a video of him and be like, I'm going to do this because it reminds me of that, like the 76 analogy with the horse thing. Like explaining that in real time as you did it, like just outside looking in like that might be something that I, I'd watch you do that. I've or never least, thought about that. Or at least yeah. anal, at least like talk about your print after it's done too. I mean, mm-hmm. Twitch, I, there, I guess there's no time constraint on Twitch. You could be on that shit for hours and people love that stuff, but they're mostly playing games. Yeah. So and some of those people make like an insane amount of money. Yeah. A lot of money. But like yeah. a lot. Yeah. So, but I'm saying like, you're kind of like a, cause you're not, not friendly, but you're definitely like, you're more intense. Bob Ross would be like your, your thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like your, your show would be called happy little fuck ups. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great analogy for my life. Oh my God. Happy little accidents. Um, yeah, no, that's see, I didn't, I've never thought about actually like expressing my process, how like I have to you guys. Cause that is more or less how my brain is talking when I'm drawing. Like, how can I put this in there? Well, I should put that in there. Mm-hmm. I'm sure if I just said that, people would probably love it and be entertained by it to some extent. Um, and I'll sometimes like tell people when I'm doing live feeds on Instagram when I do it, I'm like, I'm going to do this because it looks cool. And people are like, oh, that's why you did that. And then mm-hmm. you'll see like nine little hearts pop up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that makes sense. I mean, I, I'm going to absolutely look into that this week because right now I, I recently left my full-time job and now I'm trying to find a part-time job so I can make more art and be more on top of responding, replying, mailing, packaging, and doing all of my like own personal art business for people. It is it is a ton of work, man. It is, but it's like more rewarding than you know, like definitely any other job I've done. Not that art is a job; it's a passion. But I'm gonna absolutely look into Twitch because that's smart. I'm like I I've thought about TikTok just because like I'll do videos and people are like that's cool to watch you draw. That's how you that's how you draw. And I'm like yeah, yeah that's how I draw. And they're like that's so cool sporadic but cool uh-huh. but it's also like everyone loves watching like big monsters 
videos right the, the quick snap His like mini viral. videos and it yeah. goes viral and it's cool to watch him create a whole piece within like two minutes you're like whoa mm. this is crazy you know yeah um so i'm absolutely gonna have to look into to to doing twitch for like a whole painting maybe like do a full drawing and then do like a whole painting and, and then it just talk about it as i'm doing it that's not a bad idea man uh, and see see if people bite you know for sure i mean it's fun for me you know i've also thought about so many different things that i could do that would be it would engage with like my sense of humor and one idea that I don't know if I'm going to do or not because I don't know if everyone in my life would agree that it would be a good idea. But I was Probably like, a good idea that I'm excited. I was like, what if you did a Bob Ross like art show where you just started to slowly drink at the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> and so then like, I mean, obviously it's not something you would do every day. You'd probably do it like once a week, but it's kind of like, you know, drunk Bob Ross. You're like, you get sponsored one night by some type of alcohol in town, and then you like start a painting. You're like, "This is my first beer." It's like drunk history, but painting. <laughs> okay, I like it. And you're like, "We're gonna paint a mountain today." And then like you know, hour two of the painting, you've had like seven beers, and you're like, "I fucking love trees." And then you're like, <laughs> "I'm gonna paint a smiley face here." And you just ruin a painting, but it's like it would be kind of that's, I, the, that's the title: ruin a painting. Ruin a painting. Yeah, that's great. Um, how, how are you gonna ruin this painting? <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously not something I would want to do as a as a long term show because yeah. the things it would do to your body, but. Yeah. Um, um, I was like, I think it'd be pretty funny to yeah. do like a couple just like drunk Bob Ross painting yeah. painting things and then uh, put it on like cable access TV at like two o'clock <laughs> in the morning because that's like when those weird things are usually on TV anyways. Yeah. And every episode ends with, oh, man, I think I ruined this painting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was just ruining that one. I was just such a good painting. I guess I just ruined, it. It just ruined a painting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you have any thoughts about like the actual like this conversion? I I'm fascinated by exactly where you're at right now. Is that the Stephen Pressfield calls it turning pro, but like uh, you know you're man you're trying to manage you're trying to do this transition. You know what parts um, what's the learning curve that maybe you know now having done it for a little bit that you wish you would have told yourself like right when you first started like starting to sell your art with frequency. Um, I would say that I've the things I've realized more recently that have taught me the more tools to success is um is start to realize like what you like creating and then what tools you need to make it easier for you to create and then start acquiring those tools before you take the dive. Mm -hmm. Like for example, I started to with the with thankfully having a full time job for the last several years I was able to like slowly acquire more tools mm -hmm. Yeah, and tools can be anything from like actual tools, like an impact driver. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to build real fast wood panel canvases versus stretching canvas, because I find wood is easier and more sturdy for you to paint and lean into mm -hmm. versus canvas can be dented. And that's something that took me a few years to figure out. Yeah. But it's like, now I've realized it's all about tools. What tool do I need next? And it's like, not chasing capitalism in terms of what can I buy next and own next. It's more mm -hmm. like what can I acquire that will help me be able to sustain the creative process I want to more. Mm -hmm. And I think I wish I had told myself like five years ago that you should start investing in the tools that you want to use to sustain this. And um, I think in the last year I've gotten more things that have made it more easier for me to build things from scratch because there's so much like recycled wood everywhere yeah. mm -hmm. in the city. There's like so many construction sites that will just like throw half a sheet of like unused wood on the street. Like it's garbage. And you're like, that's a four foot by four foot canvas. And yeah. You bring it home and you cut the bit ends off and you make it easier to use. And then yeah. you mount it to a piece of wood and you got a free canvas. Yeah. Um. So I think the huge thing is like acquiring the things and trying to save up and get the things you can when you can. Cause then it'll be easier for you to, continue to create like i was telling um you on the way in that i invested recently in a really nice printer mm -hmm. and now i'm like saving a like a substantial amount of money not having someone print my art for me yeah and it's like now i can like the other day i was like joking with my girlfriend i was like i'm printing money baby yeah <laughs> and she's like yeah you are yeah, you are printing i was like well it's my art does it finish drawings and paintings and now like we have them scanned i can like print them and i can sell them at different sizes to people in markets yeah. or like or at shows and so i think i think i think i'm answering your question correctly no, absolutely it's, i it think it's acquiring more tools yeah. that can help you 
support yourself. It's dope. It's tangible. It's actionable. Yeah, it's actionable. That, and I think that right, a big part of that leap is that there's no, there's not a lot of actionable stuff. Everyone's like, well, you got to be ready to work hard. And this is like, that doesn't help anybody. Acquiring the tools you need in advance when you have the ability to is great. Yeah. yeah. And lots of caffeine. Lots of caffeine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, or any other source um, that's not too damaging to your body. Like people are now drinking those like new mushroom coffee like drinks that are all over Instagram. I don't know what the they lion's mane stuff. Well, the lion's mane is great for your brain, but yeah. like, like the others, yeah, that's like the lion's mane or coffee. Shroom tech, yeah, 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 shroom tech, all that yeah. crazy stuff is coming out now. I mean, if you don't like coffee, that's good. that's fine, whatever. I think having something that inspires you or gets you out of bed is extremely helpful, and that could just be hot tea, and that's fine, you know. Um, yeah, tools, man. That's what I figured out is, is tools, and also trying to figure out what you can get for free. Because you're like, there's so many different materials out there that you could use as a canvas as long as you just figure it out. Like I recently, and don't be afraid to dumpster dive. Like, I mean, there's so many things we throw away that you could be used. It could be used as a canvas. Like weird tarp could be stretched around some wood that you found behind behind like Harbor Freight. And yeah. then you could turn that into a canvas. And then not only are you being sustainable, but you're also like saving money by creating something Um I just learned recently, just don't do a commission with found garbage wood and then tell the person who bought the painting from you that you, you found that in the garbage. <laughs> did I just buy a piece of garbage? Well, technically you did, but it's got my art on it. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I <laughs> Talk about ruin a painting. <laughs> Here's your garbage painting. No. Here's your garbage painting. Um, oh, my God. But like, I don't know, like recently I was like behind a Harbor Freight, not that I go behind Harbor Freight, like it's a habitual thing, but, um, I found a box of like, it was like garage panel flooring that you like put on the floor. So you protect your garage floor to like do work underneath your car. And like, there's these plastic kind of like weird corrugated things you connect together and they have a fake steel texture to them, but they were unused and just a whole box of them, like a hundred, almost a hundred square feet were thrown in a dumpster. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to take my, uh, one of my tools that I acquired. I'm just going to take one of my saws and I'm going to cut off all the little plastic bits mm -hmm. and then just turn them into like, into canvases. That's sick. Cause they'll look like the texture of metal, Yeah. but they're just plastic and they're light. Oh. And I probably have like maybe 50 of these little, like almost square foot by square foot panels. Mm -hmm. oh. And so I'm going to cut all these little plastic bits off, recycle those. And then I was just going to like offer them to any other street artist, artist in town. Yeah. Be like, if you wanted one of these panels, go for it. I mean, I didn't pay anything for them. You can spray paint it. It looks like the texture of metal, but it's not metal. Yeah. Which would be dope for like wheat pasting or like throwing some slaps on it or painting anything. I also always like to think about things like that. Like, well, I could just save these and that's like a 50 piece group art show. Like, not yeah. that my garage is full of garbage right now. It's not. There's, like, some stuff in there that should probably be thrown away. Yeah. Like, any garage. But, um... That's a cool idea, though. But I was, like... The I brought them home. Metal and I was, show. like... I was, like, dude, <laughs> yeah. you could... Yeah. Was like, I could... We could use this as a group show. Yeah. yeah. And I was, like... Then it's, like, they're an awful royal blue color. Not that there's anything wrong with the color blue, but I don't like royal blue. Mm. But I was, like, I'm going to bring this home and spray paint them, and I'm going to, like, wheat paste on them. And then if people don't want to do a group show with them, then I can also just put something on them and I can like tack them up around town and people can go find the art. That's awesome. You know, cause I also think it's, I also think it's important to like have fun with fine shit. And then also if you're gonna make something out of fine found objects, you also just like put it up around telephone poles around town and let someone who can't afford to buy art, get a free piece of art. That's really cool. Cause it's like, not everyone has access to buy a painting. Yeah. Not everyone has access to even buy a print. So it's like, sometimes I like to hide full paintings in town and share it on Instagram. Cause I'm like, some lucky fucker is going to find like a 400 hour painting today. That's so cool. And then people, you see people like lit on Instagram, like I found the fucking painting. Yeah. And you're like, like, <laughs> like yeah. your day's made and my day's made. It's, Great. That's beautiful, man. Uh, how can people find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram. It's just Wolf X dog. W O L F X D O G. Um, that's my Instagram account. And then I also have a website, which is just Wolf X Um, I have lots of the things that I have available up on there. You also just contact me for commissions through either avenues, either the website or Instagram. Um, I usually reply to almost every single DM that's ever sent to me in both folders just because um, I like either answering questions 
trying to find ways to help people. Also, if people support my art, I'm obviously stoked. Yeah. But um, also having the K-12 art education degree background, I like sharing my process with people and giving people the information if they like, how'd you do this? Like, I like telling people how I did things. Cause I'm like, I figured it out this way. Yeah. And yeah. people are like, oh, that's really cool. Thank you. So it's like, I like answering creative questions. I'm also really good at troubleshooting. So if like people are like, I can't think of an idea for a painting, then I can like, I can easily help. Not easily. I like to help people be like, that's cool, man. Well, that's what? really yeah. cool. I was like, what do you want to do next? And they're like, well, I don't know. I'm just trying to find a new theme. You know, like I, I like bullshitting with people and shooting back and forth ideas. Yeah. Cause to me that's fun. Cause it gets my brain working and then yeah. I can find a new inspiration as well. Hell so yeah, really, Wolf X, this Wolf really X cool talk. thing to talk to an artist that you like like that and have them help you come up with an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Con you're, concepting. Yeah. We've yeah. had a lot of people on. I don't think anyone's ever said they do that. That's pretty cool. I like doing it. Cause I think it's fun. Uh, bravo. Yeah. I also will comment people's paintings. Like that's cool. What if you put gold around that? They're like, I didn't think about gold. <laughs> I'm like, I know. Right. Isn't that a good idea? And they're like, that is a good idea. <laughs> or sometimes they're like, that's a bad idea. And I'm like, it's probably a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I don't know, but, um, yeah, just kidding. Uh, yeah, that's terrible idea. <laughs> but I'm always, I'm always down to, to shoot the shit and answer people's questions. Yeah. I'm cool. pretty open with it. You know? Oh yeah, man. I love it. Well, Dude, yeah. To follow them on all the socials. I'm sure there'll be shows happening later down the road and yep. you'll be at them. Absolutely. As much as possible. Awesome. Thanks again for yeah, coming thanks, on. Thanks, thanks, thanks for having me guys. Yeah, this has been great. Yeah, this has been fun. Hopefully yeah. I didn't, uh, ramble too much. <laughs> It's a podcast, bro. That's the point. <laughs> you ruined the podcast. <laughs> ruined paintings, ruined podcasts. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. You're welcome. Bye, Thank you. Later.